the leadership of our captains and, and really of our upperclassmen is, is critical, you know, and, and that's one of the things we talked about a lot when I got here was for us to have success now like we wanted to, it was going to take buy-in from those guys, you know, and the thing that we promised them was we were going to give them everything we had to have the best year as quick as we possibly could for them, but we needed them to get in line with the culture and how we wanted the program to run, and, and they certainly have done that. And, and without guys like Dwayne and Shaka and Jacob, you know, this, this thing isn't where – we want it to be, and it's those three that stand out. But there's a whole bunch of seniors in that locker room and older guys in that locker room that have really bought into what we're trying to do. Riley Leonard takes a knee, and the Blue Devils are going to get out of Chestnut Hill with their sixth win of the season. It is back to the postseason for Duke, and Mike Elko has done it in his first season as they take care of business on the road, 38-31, to knocking off Boston College and picking up their third ACC win of the season. A great win, bowl eligible in season number one, as you've said, first time since 2018. This is where Duke football belongs. Obviously, that's a goal for every ACC program, and it's certainly a goal for this one. And for us to get it in year one and, and as early as we did in the season, certainly an accomplishment for the guys in our locker room and the hard work they put in in the last 10 months to get this program where it is. It's been a long time coming. Like I said, I got here in 2019. It was my first year, and now it's 2022. And the past couple of seasons have not gone our way. I mean, possibly anything you think could go wrong has went wrong. And to know, like, all the hard work we put in the off season, like, all the new things, all the new changes, like to know we're going bowling just means so much. It's awesome just coming off, you know, two rough years. Um, to be bowl eligible this early with a few games left uh, it means a lot. I just think it's a testament to the hard work that's put in since January, a testament to Coach Elko and his staff and just complete buy-in. And I just think the hard work has paid off. And I think, uh, you know, it'll be fun to see what happens in the coming weeks. That is a baseline as an ACC program. I think that is something... Um, that we have to be able to accomplish more often than not. Uh, certainly something that we shoot for every single year. And we talked about at the beginning of this year that even though expectations weren't high, uh, that was still something we talked about and something we didn't back away from. And so that's something we want to make a yearly thing that we do every year. We want to be competing for bowl games and hopefully continue to build this program to compete for more. Coming into the year, we uh, expectations were very low outside of the uh, facility for this program. And I think um, just being able to, uh, like, listen, hear those expectations and just, you know, uh, internalize it. I think uh, just us as a team, um, it just gave us an edge uh, throughout the off season. It gives us an edge on Saturday nights um, that we play with and I think we played with all year um, that I think you can see out there. Um, there's just an extra uh, bit of physicality, an extra bit of toughness. Uh, this team fights and they, we fight hard and I think, I think a lot of that has come from being doubted so early on. I don't know if it was an edge. I, I think this team is hungry to change the narrative. And, and obviously they got a lot of pride in their performance and, and they know what the last two years have looked like and they know what they've been like on the field. And I think there's probably an internal drive to just change the perception of what Duke football stands for. And, and so I don't know that there was necessarily a chip or anything like that. I just think we've got a really good group of kids that wanted to change the narrative and, and they bought into what we wanted to be about. And I think you've seen it on the field. At the end of the day, like, our whole thing this year has been about us. Like, about proving ourselves right, knowing that we're, we can do what we set our minds to do, like, we're confident in our abilities and knowing that we put in the work to actually succeed at this level. So, just knowing, like, we believe in us. As they come to the line on third and five, the Blue Doubles bring four, and in trouble is Moorhead. He's going down. Sack back at the 11. Dwayne Carter picks up sack number three and a half on the season. I guess just kind of reflecting, looking back, all I can think about is just off-season. Off-season training, like, I mean, we could say whatever, like, play calls. We could say, I mean, different defensive play calls, off play calls. But at the end of the day, like, it's how we train the off-season, the dedication that we had this year. I mean, it's just different. Looking at the guys, like, you can see it's different guys' eyes. It's different the way they play. And it's just the passion's there. And we just, I guess it was more confident in ourselves this year, and I believe that came from our off-season. When you're playing Power 5 football and you're playing in the ACC, you know, 11 of our 14 teams are going to qualify for bowls this year. And, and that's, the, that's the side of that ledger you want to be on every year for sure. 
Truck All Access is brought to you by Gatorade and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. With Zero Sugar and refreshingly delicious, is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. it first yeah, yeah, yeah. you can feel confident continental is the smart choice in tires and the handle extremes yep tested from the texas desert to near the arctic circle really really anything for the guy who finds that one pothole yeah road hazard coverage has your back for real absolutely were they made by like a bajillion engineers well closer to a hundred continental Welcome to the Smart Choice in Tires. You said no blitz. You said no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns, as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready Big Bow Box. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald looking over the defense. The quarterback of the Blue takes the snap. Going to keep on the ground with Doc Westmore. Straight ahead, huge hole, 15. Jacquez Moore will rumble in for the touchdown. And the Blue Devils stretch the lead here in the third quarter. It's 30 to 14 with the extra point to come. Jacquez Moore right up the middle. Uh, it was very well blocked. They've been given the touchdown towel at times to offensive linemen out there, Dave. Number 62 might just need his own to carry around. I think so. Get him whatever he needs. That's Graham Barton, the left tackle. The displacement of the defensive end on the left side was remarkable by Barton. Just drives his guy 15 yards down the field, erases him from the play. I think our offensive line this year has really been the lifeblood of our program, and that's what we talked about, and that's what we wanted. Uh, and I think you're starting to play out. I think we're running the ball extremely well. Uh, we're very effective. We're protecting Riley, which we knew was going to be a big challenge this year, was making sure that we kept him clean, and we've been able to do that. And, you know, we've been able to do it with a lot of different combinations. You know, we had John Jalot starting early in the year, and he went down, and Dre Harris has stepped up, and then Mo McIntyre goes down, and Jack Burns has stepped up. And, and so I think you've seen some depth evolve in that group too, which has been really critical. Injuries are, are really tough, um, especially up front. It's such a physical sport, and so I, it, injuries come with the game. So you have to be ready. I think we did a great job early on. Coach Cushing just uh, making sure guys are playing at different spots, getting experience in different areas of the field. And um, I just think that was important because um, getting into the uh, last quarter of the season, uh, everyone is comfortable where they are, and I just think we've got good stability. Um, and if one man goes down, one of the standards in the offensive line room is to be able to step up, know the position, know your job, know your responsibilities. Um, and I, so I think we'll be just fine. Inside handoff for Waters. He'll get a couple more. Maybe he'll have a touchdown. Stretches. He's in. Wow, what a physical presence. Jordan Waters punches it in. Jacob Monk loves it. The big guys carry him in, and it's 20 to nothing. That's where everything starts up front. And just being tight with those guys and knowing them and just being close with them makes them trust us and we trust them. The offensive line, we we kind of identified ourselves early as we wanted to be like a gritty physical group, um, you know, that just is able to move people. Um, we wanted to store at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we want to create space for our running backs and protect 
our quarterback, and I just think we've uh, stuck to that identity all year. I think we've had a lot of success rushing the ball, um, and I think that's just a testament to uh, our offensive line's uh, commitment to hard work and physicality and just uh, playing through the whistle and just playing for each other. The offensive line for Duke, we've talked about it. Graham Barton, the left tackle. Chance Lytle, transfer Jack Burns. Jacob Monk, he has been around a long time. This is his 44th career wow. game for Monk, the senior. And then Andre Harris on the outside as well from Oklahoma City. A veteran, smart group. I think Graham and Jacob have really anchored the front for us. I think both of those guys are playing at a really high level. I think both of them challenge themselves to kind of hit a much higher ceiling for themselves this year, and, and they both have done it. And, you know, Graham on the outside really gives gives some solidity to the backside of Riley and has also become a really, really talented run blocker. And then Jacob's athleticism on the inside and what he does from a physicality and a mentality standpoint has been really great for us. I just wanted to make sure uh, I learned the system. Uh, it's a new system. Uh, compared to what we've had in the past, and I just wanted to make sure I was sound, understood the offense uh, conceptually, you know, of being able to know, uh, like take a picture of the defense, being able to take a picture of the offense, being able to kind of play it out in my head um, going in so I can make split decisions um, and just, uh, you know, be able to just focus on technique and stuff, knowing the assignments kind of um, in the back of my head. Um, so I think that's important. Um, I think I've tried to develop, this is my second year at left tackle, so I think I've tried to develop some, um, develop into a better left tackle, keep improving. Um, and I just think that's come through a lot of practice um, and a lot of hard work. Everybody ready. Third and goal, here's the snap. The give to Water, straight ahead. He burrows his way in for the touchdown. Jordan Waters with his seventh of the season. And the Blue Devils have opened it up here in the fourth quarter. It's 37 to 21 with the extra points to come. You know, it's important um, to make sure that we're staying, the entire offensive line's uh, holding ourselves to the standards and holding each other accountable. Um, so I think, uh, you know, Jacob is a great leader, um, selfless leader, um, really important to our offensive line. Um, and I think he just comes out every day and sets a standard and plays hard, plays physical, uh, plays with passion. And I just think all of us, uh, you know, continue or try to model Jacob's game and his work ethic. And yeah, I think that he's helped us a lot. So iron sharpens iron. And I kind of knew like coming in from spring ball in the summer and fall camp, like we we're gonna be a force to be reckoned with on both sides of the ball. So coming in every day and competing against those guys, I mean, and they rush for you know, like 200 yards a game. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's very cool to see, but we had this debate all the time, like, will they get 200 on us? And we keep telling them they wouldn't. They wouldn't even come close. That's what we say, but at the end of the day, they're very talented. They make me a better player. That starts all the way back to fall camp. You know, when you go out to a fall camp practice and you, you're trying to have a physical practice, a lot of that is determined by the offensive line. If the offensive line comes out in the right mindset and the right mentality and starts knocking people around, well, that ups the physicality of the entire practice because nobody wants to take that all day. And so now your defense gets more physical and now your running backs get more physical and it really all starts with what your offensive line does. Two wideouts on the left side, one on the right. It's Coleman straight ahead, huge hole, inside the 10, the five, into the end zone, touchdown! Wow! Coleman right up the gut, and the Blue Devils strike first. This team uh, all year has faced adversity. Um, I think a lot of adversity was implemented into our offseason program, and I just think uh, through that, we've kind of, like, we've just learned to fight, uh, and fight for each other, fight together, and I just think that's shown up on Saturdays, um, just the way we respond to adversity, the way we respond. Something doesn't go our way, we, we never uh, lay down, like we fought all year and I just think, that, I think that's what I'm most proud of um, as a team is the way we've been able to respond to challenging situations and games. Uh, we just haven't seen this team lay down and I don't think I ever will. Here's the snap on third and goal into the flat for Durant. Makes the catch, 10-5, touchdown! He walks in for his first receiving score of the season. Seven all together for number 21. A monster block by the left tackle. Graham Barton on that play. A little screen pass out to the running back in the flat. And Graham Barton absolutely leveled the corner. Didn't see him coming. And that's why Durant was able to walk into the end zone. I mean, big number 62 out in space, bam! is clearing the way. At Therabody, we believe that everybody deserves a chance to keep going, keep dancing, keep celebrating, 
and reuniting. It's never too late to rise. You got that fire in you. It's never too late to rise. Because everybody is a therabody. be bumps in the road but we got guts america we got freedom we got power we got future so let's drive on and make the future we want to see together because your new ford vehicle is just the start of a journey so stop by your ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new ford trucks and suvs on their way we've been building this country for 119 years but we're just getting started Football 360 with Dave Harding. Presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Congratulations to former Duke football player Anthony Dilwig for being selected for induction into the Duke Athletics Hall of Fame. He joined seven other people for that great honor and certainly well deserved by Dilwig, who was a fantastic quarterback for the Blue Devils, also handled punting duties during his time at Duke and he still holds several records from his time as a Blue Devil. Career passing efficiency, still number one on the charts. And then his 1988 season, that's his senior year, he still holds several single season records from that, including most passing yards, total offensive yards, pass attempts, touchdown passes. He had 24 and 300 yard passing games with nine of them in that 1988 year leading him to all ACC first team honors as well as ACC player of the year. He credits his teammates obviously for some of his success but also his coach Steve Spurrier for helping him understand the game of football top to bottom. Helped him slow the game down especially during his senior year and understand what defenses are trying to do. He could read at the line of scrimmage, anticipate what was going to happen. But another special thing about Dilwig, and I think that really helped elevate his game, was his ability in the backfield to manipulate a defense and using his shoulders in particular. This is something that he worked a lot with and asked a lot of questions of Steve Spurrier, helping understand why a defense does a certain thing. And here are two really good examples of that from that 1988 year. This is against North Carolina at the snap Watch Dilwig's shoulder. The shoulders being basically perpendicular to the line of scrimmage, even though he's throwing the ball to his left. That's pretty rare. Oftentimes you'll see a quarterback be a little more parallel to the line of scrimmage when he's throwing to his left or even down the middle of the field. It helps give them more vision, allows for a little bit more mobility in the pocket as well. Here, Dilwig right at the snap, perpendicular shoulders and kind of throws across his body. Part of keeping his shoulders open in that way, looking toward the sideline, helps keep the safeties that are playing down the field over, away from his intended target, and forces the corner to work one-on-one. -on -one. If Dilwig had his shoulders more facing down the middle of the field, safeties might anticipate a throw to the left and play over that way. This is against Tennessee. Look at how deliberate he is off the snap to get his shoulders back and turned. He's almost pointing some down the field behind him, 
really over exaggerating his positioning, keeping his eyes center, if not right, looking the safeties off, holding them in their position, not just taking what the defense gives you, but manipulating them with his shoulders, with his eyes, and then using his great accuracy to his teammate to get them the ball in the end zone. Anthony Dillwig could do it all. Fantastic player. It's a big reason why he's still in the record books and now will be in the Hall of Fame. Second down, going deep. Daniel Jones, Darius Slayton has a giant touchdown. On the boot, Jones throws. Touchdown, Bellinger. Jackson right up the middle, lowers his shoulder and takes it in. Throws this side of the field and is picked off by Michael Carter after the tip ball. Now pressure. One defensive play, Chris Rump, who was a stud. The home to all kinds of times. Now get rid of it, Noah Gray, don't but he's got the football. never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by like a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to a hundred. Continental. Welcome to the Smart Choice and Tires. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. There's a reason every Odyssey is named after the Odyssey. Because the world's most famous story isn't about staying put. It's about being there. So for those who want a story to tell, may you find out who you are. We have a world full of places to start. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. It's showtime, it's your time. It's game time, it's go time. You got one shot at a gold mine. Shotgun, here's Leonard, ready? Here's the snap. Awkward one handed it well, gonna keep it himself running right. 45, bounces outside, here goes Leonard. 40, 30, down the right sideline, say goodbye, touchdown. And Riley Leonard is dancing in the end zone as the Blue Devils strike first. Everybody ready, here's the snap. They bring three. He's got all sorts of time, can run if he wants to, stretches out to the right, looking downfield, cuts back inside. He's got a first down and more across midfield and down to the Boston College 39-yard line. Well, wow. Mike Elkel told us he's a basketball player playing quarterback. How about the shiftiness in space? Yeah, he just crossed over the whole defense, ran out to the right. He was trying just to extend the plate. Yeah, the run game, you know, obviously like every week, the, the offensive line just, you know, continues to dominate. They're a real smart crew. And, uh, you know, we had answers for everything that they brought us. They, they tried to load the box. And, uh, you know, we had checks to, to, you know, adjust to that every single play. Um, so credit to the O-line. They fought their butts off. Super proud of those guys. Riley's really easy to play for. Um, you know, we all love playing for Riley. Such a great guy, natural leader, uh, a lot of charisma. Um, I can't say enough good things about Riley. So very easy to protect hard for him, play hard for him. Um, you know, and he just, he, he supports us and, you know, we do our best to help him and 
I just think we've got a good relationship there. Second down and 10, here's the snap. Roll into the left is Leonard. He can run it himself across midfield, and now he's loose. Nothing but green grass in front of him, headed to that blue end zone for a touchdown. Riley Leonard, a 56-yard rip. He will, pushes it ahead, didn't he much? Spins to the right, he's got a touchdown! How about that? Leonard found some room, and now he's dancing in the end zone. Keeps it himself running left, breaks a tackle, Riley Leonard rumbles in for the touchdown! Four-man rush, he's got time, rolls to the right, can he win the foot race? Inside the five, cuts it to two, upended and somehow held on to the football. Here comes the blitz, he's got time, tucks to run across the 15, the 10, Leonard cuts to the left, Inside the five and finally brought down as he got to the two. A 15 yard pickup. It'll be first to goal. If I'm ever behind Riley or something when he takes off on a run, I'll, uh, my heart kind of skips a beat when I see him get airborne <laughs> after a hit or something. But kid always gets back up, uh, gets right back into the huddle. So, I mean, it's, it's impressive. Uh, that's just a competitor in me. And luckily, uh, the five guys on my offensive line. Um, take a lot of hits off my body, so I only have to take a few hits a game. So it may look like I'm just trying to look for contact, but when I only have the opportunity because of those great guys uh, a couple times a game, I, I try to showcase that. Here's the snap. Leonard to throw, looking to the left, has some time. Now it starts to break down, peels to the right, has some room, 40. Trying to get inside 35, spun around, and he got very close to a first down. Four-man rush, looks to the right, tucks to run inside the 10, the 5, still on his feet. Riley Leonard surges! Into the end zone for the touchdown! Makes the throw, tucks to run, cuts left at the five, shoulder down, full out, touchdown! He stretched it out with the right hand, and the Blue Devils have the lead. Here's the snap, Leonard gonna run, he can walk, he chalks in for the touchdown. Nobody home on the right side of that Aggie defense, and it's 27 to three. Second and 24 off the 26. Leonard from the shotgun, looks to the right, has some time, now tucks to run across the 25 to 30, angles left, 30. Five back to the right. Leonard's loose across midfield. Riley Leonard pulling away. He'll go all the way for the touchdown. 74 yards, and the Blue Devils have the lead. Riley Leonard, that's what dreams are made of. They just rip it down the field. I like to think of myself as a cheetah now, but nobody else is going to give me that credit in the locker room, so I'm probably still at the giraffe level.